ever wondered how communication is achieved between an aircraft and another aircraft or an aircraft and a ground station in this video today we look at VHF communication system VHF communication system is a voice communication system that enables voice communication between an aircraft and another aircraft in flight it also enables communication between an aircraft in flight and a ground station thirdly it enables communication between an aircraft on ground and another aircraft on ground or an aircraft on ground with a ground station while on ground the frequency of uh, VHF communication system ranges from 118 to 136 decimal 980 megahertz there are two channel spacing increments uh, that are found on a VHF system some systems uses the 8.33 kilohertz channel spacing and some other systems uses 25 kilohertz channel spacing for those VHF systems that uses the 8.33 kilohertz channel spacing you can find a total of 2280 VHF channels and for those VHF communication systems that uses the 25 kilohertz channel spacing you can find a total of 760 VHF channel. So what are the components that are found on a VHF communication system? The major components that are found on a VHF communication system are one, the transceiver, two, the control unit, and thirdly, we have the antenna. Normally, the transceiver is installed in an avionics compartment, also called the electronic compartment on some aircraft. The function of the transceiver is uh, it acts both as a transmitter, also as a receiver. During transmission, if the push-to-talk switch is depressed on a handheld microphone, the transceiver works as a transmitter. Therefore, it processes the information or the voice that comes from the microphone to signals that are transmitted through the antenna to the other VHF receiver. When the transceiver works as a receiver, when the handheld microphone push to talk switch is not depressed, and in this configuration or in this mode, the transceiver only processes the signals that it receives from, this, from the antenna and uh, decodes the signals into an audible voice that the pilot can hear on their microphone or on their headsets. So that is the function of the transceiver. Second component that we have uh, on a VHF communication system is the control panel. The control panel is found in the cockpit of an aircraft. It can be on the main instrument panel, it can be on the pedestal, and on some aircraft, you can have the say, control panel of the VHF system on the overhead panel. The function of the control panel, one, is to enable switching on and switching off of the respective VHF system. The second function of the control panel is it enables frequency selection on a particular VHF system. In these pictures here, we have three different types of uh, communication uh, control panel. We have this one here. This is the active frequency, and this is the window that shows the selected frequency. The, you use these uh, selectors here to select a frequency here, and after selecting the frequency, you transfer it to the active frequency, then the channel becomes active. So this one is found on in some aircraft. Uh, uh, for example, on an Airbus, you have this type of uh, VHF control panel. You also have another type of control panel that is found on a CRJ. It also works the same. You can see the frequency that is active, and here is the frequency that uh, is selected by this uh, selector and once it's selected it's transferred to the active window then it becomes active this is another control panel that is found on some aircraft and you can see it has a display here that displays on top the active frequency and at the bottom it displays the frequency that is selected once the frequency is selected by these selectors it is transferred to the active window so these are just some of the example of control panel that can be found on an aircraft. Next component, which is a final component that is found on a VHF communication system, is the antenna. 
The antenna are vertically mounted on top of the fuselage and at the bottom of the fuselage. This is because the VHF uh, radio frequency are vertically polarized. And as a result, the antenna are vertically mounted. As you can see on this picture, this is the, an example of a VHF antenna that is found on an aircraft. This is another example. They were mounted on the aircraft in this manner. This is the one for VHF-1, this is one antenna for VHF-1, this is antenna for VHF-2, and this is antenna for VHF-3. So they are mounted vertically on the top and the bottom of the aircraft fuse uh, VHF frequency propagation is uh, by direct line of sight. For a clear or for good reception, there should be no any obstacles because the VHF uh, signals are attenuated by the terrain and other objects. So for clear communication, there should be a direct line of sight because the VHF communication operates on a line of sight principle. As a rule of thumb, the distance for a proper VHF communication is calculated as the square root of the altitude which the aircraft is flying at in feet, and this value, this square root is multiplied by 1.06, which is a constant. And this is the formula used to get uh, the distance, the direct distance that the VHF communication system works. The one thing to note is that this distance is just the theoretical maximum, and as a result, you will not get this distance necessarily because this is theoretical. On most systems, the distance is much less due to the condition of the receiver and of the transmitter. This is the basic structure of a VHF system, with all the components that we've mentioned. We have the transceiver here, which is the transmitter and also the receiver. We have the antenna and we have the selection panel, frequency selection panel, which is located in the cockpit. The antenna mounted on top and at the bottom of the fuselage, the transceiver in the avionics compartment. These three components are the main components for a VHF communication system. Now, depending on which aircraft the system is fitted, we have additional components, like in this case, we have audio integrating system. This enable the sound being produced by the VHF or the sound being recorded or received from the microphone to be transferred to either to the antenna if it's for transmission or from the antenna for reception. This audio integrating system facilitates the tr uh, transmission of this sound to the various uh, audio equipment that are found on an aircraft. The audio equipment can be a headset, can be a boom set, or you know, the loudspeakers. So the audio integrating system function is just to integrate the voice that is being received from the VHF communication system to the various audio system or acoustic system that are found on a given aircraft. The audio integrating system panels are like this, the bottom, the bottom panels here. You can see this one is found on an Airbus. Uh, this is where all the VHF system and the HF system audio is integrated and is controlled, the volume and everything is controlled through, through this panel. And on a CRJ, we have uh, this panel and it does the same function, the voice control and uh, selection of various uh, or different VHF channel is done uh, through this audio integrating panel. On most aircraft, we have uh, three VHF systems installed. But on some aircraft, you can also find the two VHF systems installed. These VHF systems all work uh, independently, and uh, one can be used on the captain's side and one on the first officer's side. And the third the VHF system can be used for the observer, for those aircraft that have three VHF systems. One thing to note, though, is that the VHF system number one is powered on most aircraft by the essential electrical bus or by the emergency DC bus. The reason for this is, should there be any power failure, for example, if there's a loss of engine or uh, the 
loss of the main generators of the aircraft. The VHF-1 remains powered by the emergency bus, which on most aircraft is the battery. Different aircraft have different emergency electrical power source. This emergency electrical power source provides electrical power to various essential systems should there be any failure in the electrical system. So VHF number one is powered by the emergency DC bus or the essential DC bus to enable uh, VHF communication despite an electrical failure. You may lose the two other systems, VHF2 and VHF3, but VHF1 will always be powered by the emergency system to enable communication during an emergency. This is what uh, we had for you in this video. I hope uh, you have understood how this system works. Thank you for watching the video till the end. I hope you have an amazing day. See you in our next video.